I greet you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus and I invite you to stand in reverence to the Word of God. In the New Testament, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 13. This text will be projected. The Word of God says as follows. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. The church may be seated. My brethren, we are living a time that we call we call the time of soon what time is that prophetically this is the time that we await for the great event that will take place called rapture After the soaring of the trumpet, the church, there is no name for the church, but the, the church, based on the Bible called Faithful Church, this church will be taken out of this world to meet Jesus Christ in the clouds with great power and great glory. Why we can say that we are living the time of soon? The Word of God grants us that and assures that. Jesus says, Soon I will come. Soon I will come, Jesus says. The Bible says that the Spirit and the broom, the, the bride, says, Come. The church of Pompano say, Come, Jesus. And the Word of God used that expression, Soon I will come. And before all these informations, God wants that His church to live in two ways. One is in fellowship. And the other way is watchfulness. This day, the Bible says that no one knows the time or day. The Word of God says that neither the angels that are in heaven knows. No. Even the Son, Jesus, knows. But only God the Father knows the time. But I can know and you can understand that as everything in life, this day will come in which the Father in His glory, will address to His Son and say, Son, go bring the bride. Go bring your people. And we are looking forward for this day. We are waiting anxiously for this day. For the sound of this trumpet. And when this trumpet sound, we will be with Him.
all the signs, all the prophetic signs that points to the proximity of this day, they are already fulfilled. We are awaiting for the sound of the fourth trumpet. And I'll ask, the first, second, and third, did it, did it sound? The answer is yes. And rapidly, I'll remind you about that. If you are at home watching this video, open your Bible in Revelations chapter 8. The first angel, he sounded the first trumpet. And there was hail and fire mixed with blood upon the earth. And the third part of the world was burnt of the waters and all the, the plants upon the earth. And I will ask the church presently, when this happened? When, this, when did this trumpet sword? Many, many saw everything happened. Some didn't because the world is asleep. It's a prophetic sleep. But the church that is being fed and is in fellowship, in watchfulness, the, the church have seen it, have heard it, this trumpet being played. Second one, second angel played his trumpet and it was thrown on the sea, something like a great mountain burning in fire and the third part of the water of the sea turned into dead and killed the creatures and everything was lost. Jacques Cousteau, a scientist, passed away and he, had, he affirmed that more than the third part of the creatures of the sea disappeared. And I'll ask the church, did the, the second trumpet soar? Yes. Soon is the Lord to come and rapture his church. What about the third trumpet? And the third angel also played the trumpet. And a great star fell like a torch and fell upon the third part of the rivers and the waters. And the name of the star is absent. So the third part of the water of the world turned into something bitter. In the 1900s, we could go and enter in a river and grab and drink immediately. Nothing going to happen. The water was good. Now what happened? I ask you, did the third trumpet sword it? Yes. And what we waited, brethren, is the, the sound of the fourth trumpet. When the Lord will collect from the four corners of this world the chosen ones to be with him in the clouds for the great encounter with the church uh, from the church with Jesus Jesus with his bride it's not up to us but the fellowship it's on us we have no control about the world but we can keep our fellowship our intimacy with the Lord it's a life of fellowship and communion the watchfulness is to be alert to the Word of God to the signs when you see everything happen look to look it up so soon is your redemption now pay attention the prophet says that this day will be a great day 
but will be marvelous, wonderful for the ones that are prepared and waiting for the Lord. And it will be terrible. It will be two in the field, one will be taken, the other one will be left. So in another place, two will be together doing something, one will be taken, the other one will be left. When I when I came the last trip to from Brazil, the the pilot was a deacon from our church, imagine. And I was praying for him, he was praying for me. And imagine if the ones that has no salvation disappeared, it will be raptured. You are in the plane, imagine. This day, great day. It's coming. It's at hand. It's very soon. We are about to departure. Your life, are you prepared? Praise the Lord. During the word, during the message, I remember in my childhood, 
I was about to turn 11, and my father promised me a bicycle. There was a commercial that the kid left a message for his father every day saying, don't forget my bicycle. It was a pretty bicycle in the 1900s. And when I was about to turn my 11th, I was waiting for my bicycle. But when I turned 18, it was time to take my first driver's license. And I met a church, in, uh, a lady, and I, when I was 20, I met a girl and I got married with her. I want to be a father. And I asked the Lord to have first a girl and later a boy. So when my wife got pregnant, the Lord answered my prayer, resuming, uh, making short, I want to be a grandfather. They say it's very good, so the day came. Everything comes, and it will be a day that the trumpet will sound and where the redeemers will be collected to live forever with the Lord. The Lord gave some some gifts from the Holy Spirit. There was an angel in front of the pulpit, and he has a, a basket full of bread. And as the service will process, this bread will distribute it with all of us that are here in the church tonight. Because many came with sadness, dismayed, based on the circumstance of this world, the tribulations, difficult days last week. So this bread that we received will be sufficient to give us strength for one more week. And Pastor Zezinho says, one week is seven days. The number seven talks about the number of God's perfection. God has the provision for us, what will keep us alive in His presence. The Lord showed also a woman crying in the dark room, asking for help, crying for help. Many times the mankind find himself this way, thinking that there's no solution, no way for his life. And I'll say to you, for God, nothing is impossible. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the God of the impossible. He can and He do everything. So this woman, after having a moment of crying and so a door opened and a light came through this door. So she crossed the door and the Lord was there after she crossed this door. And he, he dried her tears and hold her by hand and start to walk to her. God is saying to you tonight, I take you by your hand. Come and be with me. I'll take care. Another gift talks about a family that is going through two different trials in their lives. Spiritual life and the financial life. And we say that the spiritual, spiritual matter governs the, everything else. Bible says, seek for the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. It's a marvelous word. God is saying to the servant, take care of my things and I'll take of yours. Take care of yours. Amen. This family is being called by the Lord to, to awake and to start praying. And they question the Lord, why are we going through this type of struggles? And they were taken to the back of the houses and I was showing a field. And this field, it was seen that for, for very long they neglect this field. There, were, there was no more plants, there was no more verdant pastures. We cannot neglect our spiritual life. We cannot neglect our salvation, the process of salvation. Remember what I said in the beginning of the message? Fellowship is our relationship with God. When the people crossed the Egypt in the Old Testament, every day God sent the manna in the early dawn. 
with the dew. So God is providing. Let's stand and let's pray. Closing the service, let's have a word of praise. Thank you, Lord, for this great day that is approaching. You have reached many for your presence in this last moment. We praise you as for your church is awaiting for this moment to live in this great day when we will be taken and we encounter our Savior in the clouds and we're going to be living our etern eternity with you. You have prepared this for your chosen ones. Over there, there will be no cries, no sadness. We're not going to miss anything of this world. We praise you as for we'll be with you forever. Blessed be your name. There will be with you. And we'll be together as a church praying and praising your holy name. Maranatha is about to fulfill. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We praise you, O Lord, for this service, for this moment of blessings. We adore you for this your word that is fulfilling every day. We praise you for this great day that is approaching. I will be with you. Meet Jesus in the clouds, receive our service, and give us a week of blessings, victories, moments of feast in our presence. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we say, may the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus, the great love of God the Father, and the tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be upon you all now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We have come to the end of this service. We are here, pastors, deacons, workers, at your disposal. Especially the ones that are honoring us with your visit, with your presence tonight. If you desire for us to pray for you, to make anything even more clear, wait for us. We're going to pray for you, pray with you.